Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, this is going to be the looping unit guidance video with lots of hints and help, hopefully, to help you get through the looping unit, which is the final unit of the Computer Science 20S course. It challenges your coding skills and prepares you for the final project. So the programming problems are definitely challenging, and uh, but interesting as, the, as we've moved along in our coding here. So let's take a look and get started. Okay, so whether you're on my uh, in-class website or on the InformNet class website to look at these four looping problems and the case study. I won't be going through uh, the case study. It's all in there. I will give one little hint right here at the beginning of the case study. Uh, it's long. You're going to go through a lot of code in this case study. Uh, the design is really simple, just uh, two boxes and a button. Um, make sure you read these properties to set for the two text boxes. And then you go through the code, but you're going to get to a point in the code where you're going to find, um, you're going to get an error in your code. And it's going to be, well, why is there this error there? And the error will be there um, right around here when you type this code in. And that's because you'll have to keep coding and then later on when this part of the code goes in, that error will eventually go away. So expect the errors as you're developing the case study, but by the end, the errors hopefully will get cleared up. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about the case study. Um, so what I want to do is look through these four programming problems. Certainly the two examples you do will be hints, especially the second example for one of the later programming problems. But definitely you can keep that open if you need to for looking at hints. But let's take a look at the first programming problem. So this is a millionaire type program that you're going to make um, where you enter your account balance and then it calculates how many years to be a millionaire by creating a loop and keep adding money to your account. Um, so there's some things down here how you want to code it and some hints right here. There's just a few hints for this one. Handed instructions are always on the last page. Um, but here are some of the interesting hints that we'll get to as we develop it. Okay, so you're going to build your design. You're going to name all your objects. This is now hopefully much easier for you having done this in a few units to this point. So I don't need to spend a lot of time covering that with you. And, you know, you're going to take care of easy things that I'm not going to code for you right now. Things like the exit button, you should be able to code that. Look at old examples if you don't remember the code for that. But it's this button right here, Years to be a Millionaire, where we're going to get started with our programming. So what do we need to do here? We need to read in the user's balance. <coughs> this is now something <coughs> that you've done through a couple units. Starting in the variables unit, you take something out of a text box. Often that's then kept as a, just one sec, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Often that's kept as a string variable. Then you convert it into an integer or a double number. So for this one, I'm going to assume, and I can't remember if this was one of the hints, um, that it wasn't. So money or your balance, how much cash you have, is a double. Now what I can do is I can convert dot to a double. Because I have enough experience now at this, what's in that text box directly? Normally, this would have been two steps in the previous units, and you still can do it in two steps. What you would have done is you would have said something like string value equals this text box, and then you could have put value right here, and there's nothing wrong with that code. But I think now you have enough experience at this that um, that won't oh, undo this. And it, that isn't something that you need to always do. Not sure why that undo didn't work, but let's get that back. Uh, convert dot to double. Let's say the text box dot text. Either way, the idea is you have the balance from the user. Okay. So you know what they, how much money they have. Now, let's create a couple constants for this variable. Some of the constants that we need, things that aren't going to change. So what are we looking for? 
we're looking for the value one million dollars so let's incorporate that in there so um, a double called million equals one two three four five six that's a million dollars okay what else do I need looking at the hints okay we need to turn the seven percent which is the interest into a decimal so that we can use it so I'm gonna make another double for the interest and what seven percent is a decimal 0 0.07 okay hopefully your math teachers have been doing their job to kinda do that now you could also do this a different way you could have said seven divided by 100 Oops. that would be essentially the exact same thing right that's another way to look at it as a percentage um, okay so now we want to keep looping until the balance reaches a million that's what the loop is for right the loop is for that now what I'm not going to put in the hints is some stuff that I think you should do when you think about the errors right is you need to error check right like what what if and by me putting the word if right there I'm really giving you another hint what if they have a negative balance well that's never gonna reach a million right so that's that's something to think about what if they uh, have a balance of zero you can't calculate interest on zero dollars so that's going to be a problem what if they leave the text box blank okay these are all things that I would say you need to kind of error check okay and then which I'm also going to give a hint for uh, go into The code below so this would be stuff that is covered in here it does say like how to test your program right there is one more thing that you could essentially test for if they have a negative balance what if they have a balance of zero what if they already have a million or more then I don't need to also go into this. I can just say that, that they, they do that. So these are things I'm not going to hint on you guys, but I'm just sort of giving you this as commented hints here. These would be things I would expect in a perfect assignment. Okay, now I've got my needed constants. So what would the loop look like? So if you, again, you're wondering, how do I write a loop? This is where you could, again, look at something like the examples we did or this hints presentation and you could scroll through the various hints of all the various units at this point from conditional statements and variables and then you could get to how you write a loop in this case a while loop so I'm gonna say while my balance is less than a million dollars I'm gonna keep looping okay so what do I need to do I need to calculate how much interest they they have so to calculate that interest what I would do is create a variable interest equals my balance times that interest the other one there so there's two different interest variables here there's one here called interest up here and there's one called interest down here if I'm writing my code properly using camel casing and things like that, shouldn't be a problem because this one's all in uppercase letters, this one's in lowercase letters. Now, what do I have? Now that I have the interest, I'm going to add that back onto the balance. My balance now changes. So the balance equals what it was plus that new amount of interest that I just calculated. So that would be kind of what I want the loop to do. But now I need to think about something else. What is this program actually calculating? So if I go back to the problem, 
it's calculating how many years. So what I just did was one year's worth of interest. So I need to have a variable going here. Okay. So I had I needed some constants. I also need some variables for this thing. Now, I made a variable here called interest inside the loop because I just used it in the loop. But I need my years variable to be outside the loop so that it keeps remembering while the loop is running. I don't need this to be a decimal value because years will be a whole number. I'm going to start it at zero. And then inside the loop, I'm going to add one to the years because one year has just transpired. So years equals years plus one, or you could do a little shorthand that you've learned in this looping unit. The plus plus code means years equals years plus one. So if you want, you could do that, right? Or you could do years equals years plus one. Both of those lines of code are valid. You don't need to worry about which one I'm looking for in terms of marking. They're both fine. So if this loop works, then all I have to, left to do is show the user the results. And I have a label for that. I have a label where the years is going to go. I'm going to change the text to be some amount of writing, right? So the word in, and then some more words here. So I can do that, right? Like in, using my variable, years. You will become a millionaire. So in that many years, you will be a millionaire. Okay. So that would be my sets of hints for this first one. That when you run it, okay, and you put in a number like 100, it will, oh, oh no, what happened there? It's interest is back to what I thought it was. There we go. There we go. So that would be um, sort of the answer. I didn't quite get uh, the output exactly what I wanted it to be, but that would be my sets of hints for that first one. Okay. Reset would be still up to you to figure out. Okay. Um, as you can see here, it does talk about how you'd use conditionals, but that would be my set of hints for looping problem one. Moving on now to looping problem two. Okay. Looping problem two, this Lotto 649 problem, this one is definitely a trickier one, how it's going to work. There's a set of hints here, and then more hints on the second page. A ton more sort of sets of pseudocode hints there for this one. So this one's got a lot of hints kind of built right into the problem itself, um, if you were to follow those pseudocode hints. Um, for this one as well, it might be useful for you to try this program first. So remember, you can always do that by going to assignment demonstrations and then downloading the demonstration of problem one and then uh, actually running it to see how it actually works. So with problem one, or sorry, not problem one, it's problem two. Let's try that again. Problem two. You, you have draws you can generate, so say 10 draws, and I click draw, and then up they come, lotto 649 numbers between six or between 1 and 49, and there's six of them. And in each set of numbers, no two numbers can be the same. So I can't have three, and then later on another three. Any number between 1 and, and 49, six different numbers. That's the way lotto 649 works. Okay, so with that one, you would definitely basically put all your code in the draw button. It's the draw button that has all the code inside of it. And here's where you would maybe use the hints 
that I was just mentioning here to, to help you get through it. So let's read the first set. You're most likely going to need six variables for each lotto number. So that would be maybe the first hint you could follow, right? Um, I would need some variables. So like integer number one equals zero. Or is it zero? Maybe this is something random, okay? So I'd need a random generator. Random numbers was something we did in the previous unit. So something like random random equals new random. If you hadn't seen that code before, then you hadn't used it in the previous one. Now a random number between 1 and 49. Always go 1 over, so not 49, 50. Okay, would be my first number. And then I would go and do six of these, right? So I'd have number two, three, four, five, and six. So that would be how I would generate the random numbers, something like that. So that would be my first hint, right? And then it says a counter for looping. Oh, okay, so I need something to count for my loops because, again, if, if I say I want to generate this many draws, I get to keep count of that. Okay, so maybe I would make another variable, int count, start it off at zero, okay? I would need the number of draws that they want to do. Well, if I think about it, that's what this is for. The user's going to choose that. Oh, okay. Well, then that's a combo box. So it's in looping problem two that you first use the combo box and the list box. They're explained in the notes, they're explained in the examples, but if you haven't used them before, that would be definitely something maybe you'd want to look at, right? Like in the hints, how do I use list boxes and combo boxes? So here you can see that dot items dot add right in the hints there. So that would also maybe be something I would need to do with this problem is put those draws into that combo box. Maybe I'd use that in something like form load. I'd say combo draws dot items dot add the number one. So I'm adding the number one into the combo box, then a 10, then a 100, then a 1,000. And then I can also change the text of it like it's a text box and put a one in there. And then when the form loads, maybe then those values would be right in the combo box. Ooh, we got an error. Oh, because I never finished this line. Well, let's just leave it for now. Let's just take a look. Man. Uh, oh, random.next. Can't even get the code right today. There we go. Of course I did that on purpose to show you guys that you should be remembering how to do those old codes so you can kind of sort of go back and look at it. There we go. So there's the combo box with the values in it. Okay. So now that I kind of have that in place, now I can go back here and say, okay, well, the draws equals convert dot to an integer. What's sitting in combo draws text. So very similar to the way I did it in the last problem. I can quickly get the draws out of the, of the, um, I get the draws from the user. The user is who kind of does that for me. So right there, I haven't even looked at all the hints yet. And right, read the lecture about list boxes and combo boxes. Already did that. Random numbers will need to be generated. Already did that. You will need a series of loops. Okay, that's a little confusing. We'll get to that. You'll have to use the list box, then a comma. Okay. So now maybe I'm going to go to even more hints. Create a string variable. Get the combo box. Convert it to a. Okay. Well, I've already done that. Using an if statement, if the draws are less than zero, use a message box to say that. Create a random object, I've done that. Clear out the list box, okay, well, I haven't done that yet. Let's do that. Oops. Clear the list box. So to do that, I would put list 
numbers dot items dot clear. This is also in the notes if you're forgetting that. Now what about the loops? Okay, well a loop will go while my count is less than the draws. So each draw I want to do something, then I will go into the list box, numbers, items, and add each of the numbers. So I'll add number one plus a comma plus number two and then a comma and then number three, four, five, and six. And I don't need a comma at the end of that. But that's how I would essentially do this. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six inside the list box. Now, the loop will then need to count that. So then the number, the count will go up by one. So I'm going to use that shorthand again for that. Okay? So at this point, I would increase the count. Okay? Back up here, I would add the numbers to the list box. Okay, let's kind of see what this program does at this point. Okay? It's got some code in it to do some stuff. Let's see if it's doing anything at this point. So I'm going to say 10 draws, draw. Okay, so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that worked. 10 of them are there. Okay, and each time I hit draw, it generates 10 or 100 or 1. So that worked. So it's clearing it and creating it. The problem is it's the same set of numbers each time. Okay, it's the exact same set of numbers each time. And there's another little problem with this. Um, here you can see that I have two 26s in there. Actually, I have three 26s in there. So that's a problem. So some of this would be easy to fix. If this is how I'm generating the random numbers, why don't I do that right in the loop? So I can just do them right in the loop so that it generates them each time it goes through the loop. Let's see what that does. Okay, well that fixed one of the problems. Now I'm getting different sets of numbers, but I don't know if I can see it here. I would still have the problem that sometimes in a set of numbers, here's one, I would have two of the same, two 48s in there. Well, that's not going to work. So maybe I'll tap into one of the other hints here. So one of the other hints here is it says you could, and it says it on the first one, you could have a series of nested loops, loops inside of loops which you can kind of see some hints for right here, but I'll just go through them. So the first number is not a problem. When you generate the first random number, who cares? It could be anything. It's when you get to the second random number, we have a bit of a problem. So I generate that second random number. It can't be the same as the first one. So if I just use the if statement, if number two equals number one, if they're equal, I'd make number two over again. I'd say, you know what? Let's do this again. Make me a new random number for two. Here's the problem. What if it did it again? What if it made it the exact same number? So it's not an if statement I need. It's another loop while they're equal. Go back and do it again, do it again, do it again. Only when they're not equal could I then move on. Okay? So that's how I would approach the second one. And then I would use essentially the exact same logic Moving on to the third one, I would say while number three equals number two, but I also need to check it to see, and you can see this in the hint, or if it's equal to the other one. So then I'd use my or symbol, or number three equals number one. So if they're equal, then I would go and make number three over again. Okay. And this would be the kind of code you could use to then do the other numbers. It would get, each time you're going to say or, 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 as it moves along. And that's where I'm going to stop the hints for this one, because that would then give you what you need to complete the second programming problem. Lots of hints there. Okay, so that would take you through the second one. 
Moving on to the third one. The third one, the help for this one is really in the second example. Because if you read this and, and sort of see how it works, or you download it and try it, okay, which I would recommend. Okay, so with this one, you set a tile size. I'm going to set it at 10. And yes, this one uses the uh, toolbar for something fun. At, yeah. Random colors or choose a color. I'm going to go with random. And I click rectangle pattern. It's going to draw all the tiles at size 10. If I change it to size 100, it makes them at 100 in a rectangle random color pattern. If I click triangle, it makes them in a triangle pattern. If I switch to choose color, it lets me pick the color first and then makes it. Okay, so that's what this one does. It's, it's kind of complicated, but cool. Um, but how am I going to do this one? Well, for this one, you need, again, that second programming problem. Example will really help with this one. So now when you go to make your design and build it up, okay, and then you go to write the code for this, um, before you get started, it might be useful to have that example up. Now, if you don't have the example, here's something I wanted to use uh, this example to show you guys what you could use, not only for this looping unit, but moving forward for your final project. Whether you're on my in-class course or if you're in the InformNet course, both of these courses have a help page, okay? And if you're on the InformNet course, you can also find a help page. These two same pages are essentially the same. They have the stuff about getting started in the course, but if you go further down, those same hints and examples are available right on the help page from programming unit, the variables unit, the looping unit. Here is that second example right there. Okay? So it's right there you can find that second example. Okay? And now you could go right into the code if you didn't do that example and help use it to do this programming problem. So for example, this form load code, I could put that right into the form load of this one, including comments, which might be helpful. I could take the run button, which essentially also does a lot of this stuff, and put it right into the rectangle button of this one. Now, what else would I need? That, as you can see here, there was a global variables that I maybe needed, so I'm going to grab those, put in those global variables, now that you know where global variables go. And then right now, this is looking pretty good except there's some bugs to fix, right? Like, get the, let me just back up here, get the width and height of the form. Well, maybe I name my form something different, form looping problem three. So that would fix that. I don't have an exit button and a run button and a, all this stuff. So this stuff won't matter. I won't need to position things like I did in the example. Combo box, okay, well, what did I call my combo box here? Or, actually, what I need is not this, is I need that thing, I just realized that, I need that thing, a color dialog, this color dialog here. Now, if I want to name it the same thing I did in the example, then the color dialog will use the exact same code. And there it is. So that should clear that up. Make a variable for the size of the circles. Well, the size of the circles comes from a text box this time. So the size comes from me converting to an integer what's in the text box dot text. So just changing up what was in the example a little bit. No more errors. And let's see kind of what that does. So just purely using the code from the example. Okay, well, I'll change it to black. Okay, so... I don't know if I like that, okay? Also, it's maximized it. Well, I don't want to do that either, so I'm going to take that code out. I don't need that to do that. Also, instead of changing it to black, I'm going to change it to white right here. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. Let's try that. Oop. Okay, these lines are causing an issue. Well, let's get rid of those lines too. Actually, let's not get rid of them. 
Let's get those going inside of rect. I'm just going to move them to a different spot here. Okay. Okay, rectangle pattern. Okay, not bad. It's, it's doing something, at least at this point. Now, again, some other stuff. Not black, but white. So as you slowly go through the code, you might be able to use just the example alone to get a lot of this done. However, if you read the looping, right, hints, second example, basically most of the code can be adapted. Most of the variables could be global variables. For the triangle, we'll get to that later, et cetera, et cetera, for random colors. Well, we actually already have some kind of, or actually, no, we don't for the random colors, okay? But it's on the second page again. There's tons of hints for this one. So I'm just going to leave that up to you guys to look at the second page here and adapt that into what you would need to do the essential code for this programming problem. I'll just quickly zip through it. I realize I'm going very quickly here, but, um, right? So you'd have this stuff. The color chooser would be only if that's what they chose. So if what's in combo colors dot text equals uh, the words choose colors or whatever way you wrote it, if that's what they said in there, if they the text was choose colors, then I would show that dialog box. That would be the dialog box I would show only if that's the case. Okay. Create a color for the user, still do that. Create a surface to draw on it, I would still do that. Create a surface for the new drawing, create a pen, create a brush, create a variable for the size of the circles. Yeah, all of this stuff would still happen. Okay, still have the loops, okay, but that would be if uh, they wanted to choose a color, then that's the color I would use. Because remember, um, this color that I'm creating right here would then be used by the brush, okay? So the brush... would use that color, okay? You can see that maybe right there. And then the brush would be used here for this. So as you start to realize this, then maybe all of this code would actually be better put right down here in the loop. Because if they decided to choose colors, then I would maybe do this stuff inside of here. And same with the, right, so that code would happen if they decided to choose a color. If they didn't and they wanted to use random colors, now I might want to use the hint from this first page on how to generate those random colors, right? So here would be how I create the color from the chooser. So again, moving this code around a little bit, color wouldn't be this. It would only be if they chose it. Otherwise, what I would do is, again, this is coming from the hints on there. I'd create a red variable, but I would need a random thing. So let's get that made ahead of time. Random, random. Realize this video is going real long now, equals new random. But of course, when you guys watch this, you'll only go to the parts that are relevant for you. So then right here, you would say random.next, and random colors go between 0 and 255. I'm going to go one over that. And then I would create green and blue the same way. Red, green, blue, my color would be, and again, this is right from here, color from ARGB. I can even copy it right out of this. There we go. So that would generate my random color if they chose random colors. Okay? So now with just this adapted code here from the example, most of the code came from the example. Let's see kind of how that would work. So random colors, rectangle pattern. Oh, there we go. Random colors, size 10. Let's make it size 50. There we go. If I go to choose color, 
Okay, well, that's a problem. Got to make sure I, I wrote that the same way. So let's go back to the code. Ah, see, I put colors right there. That's why it wasn't working. So let's try that again. Choose color. There we go. Okay, we don't want that to happen every time in the loop. That's an issue, okay? So this would only happen if uh, they said choose color. So I'm going to move that out of the loop. I'm going to head originally. Okay. And move this out of the loop. Okay. And now change this to if what they said wasn't choose color, but if what they said was random color, or the way I had uh, written it in here, which was random colors. Back to the code. Random colors, okay? Okay. Uh, okay, let's just see what that does. And there's multiple ways to do this. I'm not necessarily uh, doing this from the example itself. Okay. Random colors. Looks good. Choose color. There we go. Okay. So you can see there that has built it up. And that's all the hints I'm going to give for this one. A lot of fast hints there to get through that one. All right. Moving on to the final programming problem, the looping unit. The rocket racing game. Okay. A tricky one, for sure, has a few hints at the bottom here, but then a ton of hints on the second page. The second page has a ton of hints that you can use. So many, in fact, that if you really kind of wanted to, you could even take some of these hints, copy them over, and when you go into the Start Race button, You could paste those in as if they were code itself, just to kind of give you a reference. Comment all that out so it's not thinking it's code. And then kind of use it as a guide as you go to actually write the code, sort of line by line. Create a string choice variable. So string choice variable. Set it to the combos text property equals combo dot text. Okay. And then maybe eliminate the comment. If choice equals nothing, okay. If choice equals nothing, that's some kind of if statement. So you can kind of see how I could even approach this using the comments as a bit of a guide here to help me with this one. Now that's just a start. Uh, you could go back and read some of these other ones. Choice of variables, local versus global. Okay, well, what would I need as a global variable? Remember, global variables need to be remembered for the whole program. So probably my cash. I start with $100, so maybe I'll do that. Okay. What other things? That's about it. Um, event control loop, move the rockets. Well, I'll use the hints for that too quickly. Oh, okay, here's some neat code to format the cash to look like like money. So if I wanted to, maybe I could put that into, say, form load. Format the cache to look like money. So would it look like that? Oh, okay, that would be cool. All right, back to these sort of comments. Display choose proper rocket in the text property of the label. Okay, oh, okay. So I want to put this into my label for Whichever label is going to do all the outputs, I called mine label output. So equals something like, please choose proper rocket. OK. 
okay so let me just test that if I leave that combo box empty and don't choose a rocket and try to start the race that code did work okay then I see next would be my else code okay so this is me taking care of these comments now I assume the rest of this code is in the else so maybe the else actually closes way down here you can see there there's that end if stuff down there okay create a string variable and set it to the text box text property okay if text equals nothing Okay, you can see how I'm kind of incorporating these comments. Now this would be then, this would be closing down here at the end. Okay. Display. Okay, so I'm going to use this thing to display again. Please enter a proper bet. That would close and else would start. Oops. And then that would come down there. So now I can sort of test to see if that would work. So now I'd leave the proper rockets displayed, but what if I left this thing empty, it would say, please enter a proper bet. Okay, so that's some good error checking going on. Display the text in the property of a label else okay so that's all taken care of okay so now create a double variable and create it for my bet right so again that equals convert to a double what that text was so now I have stored their bet now another if statement if the bet is greater than the cash open the if statement here Okay, display you cannot bet more than you have. So again, I could just use that. You cannot bet more than you have. Okay. Else. And then that else would probably close again way down here. Okay. Okay. And then I would go on from there. So let's just sort of test that error checking. So now I've got that in there, but if I bet $200, you cannot bet more than you have. So I've error checked a whole bunch of stuff there. And now I'm on to the rest of this, okay, as it kind of moves along. So I'm showing you a guideline how you could use the hints there to really work through this last programming problem. And I'm going to stop there, okay? So those are going to be my hints and guidance for this looping unit, and I hope they help. Have a good day.